Hey everybody, I'm here to present you with the basic approach to treating hypertension or high blood pressure. First, let's start off with an easier uh, subject and that's going to be treating secondary hypertension. Now, if there's an identifiable source of hypertension, you simply treat the cause. It's just that simple. If you get rid of the cause of the hypertension, the blood pressure should resolve on its own. Now, that was pretty easy, but now let's move into something a little more difficult. The treatment of primary hypertension. This is going to be the majority, the 95% of cases. Uh, the treatment of primary hypertension is not a process that's going to be set in stone. Over the years, many different drugs have been developed for our disposal in trying to keep our blood pressure within normal limits. However, not all patients respond the same. Therefore, it's going to be uh, required that we need to do a trial and error process to figure out which optimum drug combination or treatment is going to work for the individual. Also, since blood pressure regulation is such a dynamic process, new guidelines come out all the time by different medical associations that help clinicians figure out what to use. So as of today, the newest recommendations are the JNC8 guidelines. Now these use clinical trials and research to make recommendations on how we should treat people with hypertension. The treatment is to keep the blood pressure within normal JNC8 guidelines, um, which to refresh your memory are 140 over 90 in individuals less than 60 or with comorbid conditions, or 150 over 90 or below uh, in individuals over the age of 60. Regardless, there's gonna be one thing that we need to do once hypertension is diagnosed. This is gonna be our first line treatment. Notice how I have a star here, super important. Now, the first line treatment is lifestyle modification. Lifestyle modification. Now, a well-balanced diet with plenty of fruits and veggies, fruits and veggies, weight loss, I know, I'm, I'm uh, guilty, I need to lose a little bit of weight too. Low salt or low sodium. Now these are all diet recommendations. There are certain diets such as uh, the DASH diet, D-A-S-H diet, that have been developed that have been proven to help reduce blood pressures. Now patients are also encouraged to cut back on alcohol and uh, supplement with vitamin D in certain situations. So in addition to the diet, as one of our lifestyle modifications, uh, we also recommend exercise. So patients with hypertension need to have regular uh, aerobic exercise, typically five days a week. So 30 minutes per day for at least five, uh, five days of the week, um, 30 minutes a day of aerobic exercise. So typically patients are given a trial period of three to six months on these non-pharmacologic methods to see if they reduce blood pressure. So anybody with a new diagnosis of blood pressure, uh, hypertension, should be given the first line treatment of lifestyle modifications. Typically you do this for three to six months and then reassess. So if their blood pressure uh, goes down, great. That's all we need to do. We don't need to put patients on drugs since drugs always have the risk of adverse reactions or side effects. However, if three, this three to six month period of lifestyle modifications doesn't seem to be working or not controlling their blood pressure high enough, um, we may need to reach into our medical tool bag and pull out some drugs. So what drugs can we even use? When using drugs, we don't treat everybody the same. Now I'm gonna repeat that again. When using drugs, not everybody will be treated the same. I'm going to discuss the treatment in accordance to the JNC8 guidelines. So in a patient with no comorbidities or with no other diseases, we can use our big guns, the main first line agents, which we will remember as our ACDs. Now I'm pretty bad at the alphabet. My ABCs are now my ACDs. All right, now the ACDs stand for the classes of drugs that we can use as first line agents. They stand for ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, calcium channel blockers, or diuretics. So let's talk about each of these classes in more detail. Now, I said we have the ACE inhibitors. The ACE inhibitors stand for the uh, 
angiotensin II converting enzyme inhibitor. Now these agents work by preventing the conversion of angiotensin I to angiotensin II. Now angiotensin II can act to increase blood pressure. Um, so if you block its production, so through the angiotensin converting enzyme, by blocking it, you can lower blood pressure. Now, ACE inhibitors are usually good in patients with kidney disease, such as chronic kidney disease. But we've also got a similar uh, agent. These are going to be your ARBs. Now, your ARBs are the angiotensin II receptor blocking agents, angiotensin II receptor blockers. Now, these do exactly what their name implies. They prevent this angiotensin II from binding. So you decrease the blood pressure. Now you only need to choose between an ACE or an ARB, uh, never the two together, because they have similar mechanism of actions. Now the C stands for the calcium channel blockers. So C, C, B, calcium channel blockers. Now these act on the heart and blood vessels. So calcium channel blockers slow down heart conduction. Um, they decrease heart contractility, and then they also relax blood vessels. Now, however, since calcium channels do act on the heart, you need to be careful um, that you don't worsen any underlying conditions or heart issues that the patient may have. And then lastly, we've got the diuretics. This is going to be our D in the ACDs. Now there are a lot of diuretics out there which are also called water pills, um, but the main reason that they're called water pills is because they make you pee. However, the main one that we want to start out with is going to be the thiazide class. Now the thiazide class of diuretics, they're going to help decrease sodium reabsorption and then also manage the volume levels within the body. Alright, so if one drug doesn't seem to be controlling the blood pressure here, or there are bad side effects that are um, adverse to the patient, uh, what you can do is you can switch to a different agent. One of these is not always the best. Now, if the patient has kidney disorders, you might want to choose an ACE or an ARB. However, there are many different first-line agents here. Um, you can also combine two or three of these classes. And then also, we've got a whole bunch of other drugs that act as second-line agents, and these can include uh, beta blockers, alpha blockers, vasodilators, and aldosterone antagonists. Now, plenty more out there. Um, probably the most common second line agent is going to be your beta blocker. Uh, and then, typically, the newest guidelines recommend you start with your ACDs. So the treatment of hypertension is more of an art rather than a formula, as you can tell. Like I said earlier, it's typically a trial and error process where we're going to trial a drug, see if they work for an individual, and then tweak um, if an adjustment is going to be needed.